Welcome back to the next segment of our interview with Howard Zinn, coming to you from Boston. Thanks for joining us. So eight years from now, uh, we will have been through some kind of Afghan scenario. Uh, let's, let's paint the most positive picture. Uh, Obama's diplomacy turns out to be a success. There's a deal with Iran. They solve the Afghan-Pakistan situation. There's a deal with Russia, uh, some kind of... Uh, economic revival, which means the Chinese economy gets going again and tensions reduce around the world and eight years from now, we're in a good situation. So let's, I'll hope for that. Um, another possible scenario, the uh, these stimulus package doesn't work, and as I've said this in some of the earlier segments of our interview, uh, but a medium to worst case scenario is that we're, in 10 years from now, the economy still has very high unemployment and the Obama administration is considered to either have not been a success in terms of saving the economy or not been a success in really fulfilling its promise to the middle class because it could be the best case scenario one could get out of the situation, if it's even possible, is to kind of go back to the way it was, a kind of back to American capitalism as we've always known it, which wasn't all that good for most, most Americans, especially in the last 10, 15 years. So the question is, is, is there, do you think there's any possibility because of the crisis for a different kind of politics, meaning other parties, uh, some kind of breakdown of the two-party system? If the situation continues to be as bad as it is or gets worse, and in fact I don't think it can remain just as it is, I think it probably will get worse uh, if the, these very... Uh, weak policies the Obama administration do not change into something bold. If the situation does get worse, uh, then uh, and people, what alternatives politically will people have? They could vote for a Republican. They could uh, create a new progressive wing of the Democratic Party, which transforms the Democratic Party and creates the possibility of new bold policies. Or, if the Democratic Party looks so hopeless, refuses to change, uh, continues in its present path, it's quite possible that a third party could emerge. Uh, a party which will say to the American people, we know the Republican Party, we had them, we had them under Bush. They got us into enormous trouble. We've now had eight years of the Democratic Party they're incapable of taking us out of this economic crisis, and they still have our sons and daughters overseas dying in wars. Uh, we need a new party. Uh, and I can see the possibility of a third party uh, emerging and speaking to the American people and saying, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to get our young people out of wars. We're going to stop war. We are going to cut down the military budget to the point where it's simply a defensive operation. We have not defended ourselves, despite the fact we have a Department of Defense. Every war that we have fought since World War II has been an offensive war, an aggressive war. We are going to create free health care for everybody. We're going to guarantee jobs to people who lose their jobs. Uh, we are going to guarantee adequate Social Security for older people. We are going to guarantee that people who want to go to college and who can't afford it will be able to go to college. Uh, these are the things we promise to do, and, and we have the money to do it, and we can show you where we have the money to do it through a new taxation policy and through the cutting down of the military. Uh, I think a bold program like that advertised widely, and of course this is always a problem with any new party that's trying to crash the barriers, uh, advertised on the internet, advertised in every possible way, uh, would speak to what the American people want. Because the, the program that I've just outlined, I believe, is what the American people want. I believe the American people are sick of war. I believe the American people, and they've shown this in poll after poll, want a government run health system. I, th I don't think the American people are, are as afraid of big government as the leaders of the Democratic and Republican Party are. So I think a, a new party 
that speaks very boldly and clearly in simple language to the public and presents to them a, a program which they've been waiting for and which neither party has given them. Such a party could succeed. What does it take to get there? Huge amount of organization, huge amount of education, uh, and a deteriorating situation. There's an interesting uh, convergence on some issues with a uh, section of the population that's been in the Republican Party or on the edges of the Republican Party, and best represented by Ron Paul, who on, on a lot of foreign policy issues Yes. Are in, in, very much in agreement with the progressive left. And in fact, yes. if anything, Ron Paul even goes a little further. I mean, he's called for closing all foreign military bases. Mm. And you, you don't hear that even from some of the yes. better known progressive politicians. Yeah. They, they may have it as a position, but they don't talk about it very yeah. often. Uh, Paul's talked about cutting down the military budget mm. and a whole range of international issues. Yes. There's, a, there's a, a lot in common. Mm. Now, when you get to domestic economic issues, there's a tremendous, tremendous divergence right. on most economic issues. Um, do you think, but is there grounds there for some kind of a broad front with, amongst these forces? I, I, think, I think there is ground for appealing to Republicans who are not die-hard Republicans, who are Republicans because they don't see any really uh, exciting alternative. Uh, and I think... I think there's a very large number of Republicans who are with Ron Paul's idea of no more war, no more militarism, no more foreign bases. Uh, and, uh, and I believe that there, these people who are not, as I say, the hardcore of the Republican Party, but who are a certain percentage of the Republican Party, I think these people can be appealed to by a new party. You know, many polls over the years have shown that when you ask Americans to, Americans to classify themselves as Democrats or Republicans or independent, huge number of them classify themselves as independent. They only vote Democrat or Republican because they have to, because they don't see an alternative. And so the problem is to present to them a, a viable, attractive alternative. Well, we will see how this eight years unfolds. Yes. Uh, thanks for joining us, Howard. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network. There are times when reality just asserts itself. In spite of the haze created by television news and entertainment, sometimes crisis rips a tear in the fabric of myth and propaganda. Now a profound economic crisis has ripped asunder the American dream itself. Millions of people losing jobs and homes. They lack proper health care and any real sense of security. Since 2001, workers' wages have fallen and remained stagnant, even though worker productivity has risen almost 33%. By 2006, the top 1% of households were receiving 23% of all pre-tax income more than double what it was in the 1970s. It's the greatest concentration of income since 1928. As unemployment rises, we need to know why this crisis is happening and what we can do to defend ourselves. Why are wages so low? Why is the society so laden with debt? Is it in ordinary Americans' interest to have a trillion dollar military budget to project power across the globe? Corporate television news won't ask these questions, let alone try to find answers. Only a truly independent news network can tackle these questions with courage and with ordinary people's interests in mind. We need a news network that's independent of corporations, governments, and political parties. We need the real news. But there won't be a real news network unless we raise substantial funds right away. The current financial crisis has hit our funding hard. Together, we do have the power to turn it around. There are already hundreds of thousands of people watching the real news every month. If everyone pitches in, we can build an internet and cable television network that will change the face of media forever. You can organize house parties, talk to friends at school and at work, send email blasts and spread the word. Distribute this video to everyone you know. Pick up the phone and call a few friends and suggest they visit therealnews.com. Invest just 10 minutes a day to ask friends and colleagues 
to join the campaign to create a truly independent source of internet and television news. Together, we can build this network. Just 50,000 people at $10 a month gets us to our first level of sustainability. You can help us reach this goal, and when we do, we'll move to television in millions of homes across North America. Help us reach an audience in the millions. Please contribute generously. Spread the word. Let's make the Real News Television Network a reality. Your tax-deductible donation makes it possible. Please contribute at therealnews.com.